Hello, Haunted Family. Welcome back. Story 1. A most fascinating experience. I originally discovered this house through a friend of mine who was looking for a house to rent. When she saw this one, it scared the hell out of her. She told me she heard a voice say to her, Get out. So, of course, she told me about this. She told me I had to see it. And I told another ghost hunter friend of mine about it. And he immediately leased the house for himself. We went to take a look. The first time we walked up the driveway, we both felt like we were being watched. When we walked inside the house, we knew we weren't alone. But that the ghosts were somehow scared of us. They had retreated away. Sounds weird, I know. One of them was definitely a woman, and I felt a masculine presence as well. This house was old, built in the late 1920s. Some of the original stained glass and woodwork was still there. But most of the wood floors had been carpeted over. The upstairs was a complete home. Three bedrooms, three bathrooms, an office, a kitchen, a laundry room, a big living room with a balcony off of it. The basement was a completely separate from the upstairs. It had two bedrooms, a huge bathroom, a kitchen, a laundry room, a living room with a big wet bar, and wood floors. It would be great for parties. The weird part is, you couldn't get upstairs from the basement without going outside. There was also a maid's quarters. It was just a little room with a bathroom and a small kitchenette. You couldn't get anywhere else in the house from that room either. The garage was the same way, completely shut off from the rest of the house. Even though it was part of the house. The maid's quarters had a small door that led to a crawl space under the house. There was also a crawl space above the wet bar in the basement. The wet bar area is where my friend heard the ghost tell her to get out. And there was a crawl space in the garage. There's a hidden space in the closet behind a wall. In the hall on the upper floor of the house. There wasn't anything in that one. We figured that it must have been stairs leading to the basement at one point. We explored the house, all the nooks and crannies. You can tell that it went through a lot of renovations over the years by people who didn't have style or taste whatsoever. My friend said to me, you can tell this house was once beautiful, but someone really screwed it up. All of a sudden, it felt like someone had opened a floodgate. It was the female ghost. I could feel her right next to me. And I suddenly felt like my hands were being pulled from room to room. In each room, I was being shown what the original room looked like. I would look into the room. And then a second later, I would get a picture of what the room had looked like when she had lived there. This went on for a good 15 minutes. I thanked her for showing me the house. And as strange as it sounds... I felt like if I'd made a real connection with the spirit. From then on, every time I went to that house, I got a very welcoming feeling. A few nights later, we decided to sit in the living room, with all the lights off, just to see what would happen. There was a light from the street coming in through the windows, so it wasn't totally black. After sitting there for a few minutes, we saw a purple orb in the opposite corner of the room it was the size of a basketball. And if you looked straight at it, you could just barely see it. But when you looked away and watched it from the corner of your eye, 
It was very visible. I put my hand out, hoping it would get closer. But it never quite did. It just bobbed around in the opposite corner of the room. My friend then decided to take some pictures of the inside of the house. He took 24 pictures. When he got the film developed, what he saw was amazing. In five of the photos, you can see that purple orb. There was only ever one incident in this house that was scary. Evidently, while my friend was away for a weekend, some people broke in to part of the house. There's a shed area that is attached to the house, but you couldn't enter the house through it. There's a small door that led to another crawl space under the house. They must have been crawling around with a Ouija board or something, because it unlocked a new presence in the house. I keep getting the impression of hands around my neck and choking. I told my friend I didn't like this presence, and he said, me either. It keeps saying, choke her. Choke her. We decided we was going to go out for a cup of coffee. We got halfway down the block, and I still felt that presence. So did my friend. He eventually was able to get rid of it. I never asked him how he did it, but I never felt that presence again after that night. Every once in a while, we would see the ghost of a small child running down the upstairs hallway. Eventually, my friend got busy with other things, and so did I. He had a short lease on the place, and when that was up, he moved to another city. And we eventually lost touch. But I still think about the ghosts in that house. Story 2. My Uncle's Spirits Ever since I was about 10 years old, my cousins would always tell me about the ghosts that lived in their attic and in their basement. I always thought they were just playing around. Thirteen years later, I returned to their house, and we were all talking about the good old days. My uncle started talking about the ghosts that still live with them. I was surprised, since I thought it was just lies. You know how children are. But he assured me that it was very real. My uncle said that it was not just one, but four ghosts that lived in their house. There was an old lady that will only appear in the attic, an old man who was also in the attic but sometimes in the basement, a small boy that is about five years old. He's all over the house and in the backyard, a young man who is frequently seen in the basement. My aunt and uncle remodeled their attic and while cleaning out the attic they found strange things old newspapers that was well hidden, like someone was hiding them. An old wallet that had pieces of paper and human hair in it. The strangest thing they found was what looked like bird wings, but it was really too large to be any birds around here. In the basement they found books on how to get rid of ghosts and some bags of strange powder. I'm not sure that I fully believe that what they tell me is true. They also tell me that when they really see the boy around the house playing, he's usually jumping on tables and running around like a wild child. But when any of my nieces come over, the boy disappears. And he's not seen while they're there. I wonder why he's never seen when a little girl is in the house. Story 3. The Bathroom Sink I attended a private all-girls school. And I'm just going to jump right into this story. My school is really old, like mid-1800s old. And one day I was in our three-stall bathroom. There was no one else in there. I went into one of the stalls. And while I was in there, no one else came in. I would know if someone did because the floor is wood and it creaks. 
Well, while I was in the stall, I heard the faucet running. I quickly finished and came out, and the sinks had been turned on. I walk up to the sinks, I turn them off, and then bolt out of the bathroom. That weekend, my school had a gathering. Me and my friend went to the floor that that bathroom was on. I went up to the sink and I turned it on. I waited for a few seconds and then turned it back off. I don't know what I was checking for. Plumbing problems, maybe? I don't know. I know that someone has died in this school. Many years ago, a girl fell off one of the balconies and died. Come to find out, the sinks in that bathroom have a habit of turning on on people. Interesting. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the stories. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to. Send me a message down below. I love hearing from you. And as always, thank you for listening. Music by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio.